My name is Rodolfo Goya. I am a scientist. I um, live and work in Argentina in a city uh, called La Plata, just very close to Buenos Aires city. I work at a university and uh, within the university at the School of Medicine and uh, within the School of Medicine at the Research Institute and we have a research group uh, composed of 17 persons, PhD students, junior researchers and uh, technicians. And we work on brain aging mostly and we, now we have become quite interested in uh, rejuvenation. Thank you very much for finding several minutes to talk with me. If you allow me, I would like to begin with a personal question. It's always interesting uh, to know why people decide to work specifically on the problem like aging. What was your reason to enter the field? Well, I became interested in the problem of aging when I was a teenager, <coughs> uh, 17, and uh, there were two reasons. First, uh, I found it interesting, but second, and perhaps more important, I rebelled at the fact, at this uh, fate that Mother Nature imposes on all of us. First of all, I was very young, but uh, so death was not or aging close to me. But I knew that I will lose my parents, my grandparents, and uh, my loved ones with time because they will become old, and eventually I would become old. So at 17, you think that uh, everything is possible. I decided that that was a, su a sufficient, sufficiently important problem to devote my uh, scientific life, and I decided to, to do science and to study biochemistry because I think that the problem, I thought that the problem lied in the molecules and in that regard I was right. And that was the reason that uh, just uh, started me and still I, it is the reason keeps me going because I still rebel at this destiny. That to defeat death is very difficult of course but I I do at least want to participate in that, make an effort not just to surrender to aging because, you know, uh, we humans, we have always uh, rejected the idea of uh, dying and we want to remain alive and uh, just uh, live. So this is the reason uh, I decided to, to become an, a gerontologist. That's an inspiring story. Uh, could you please uh, tell several words about your current projects? Specifically, um, as soon as I understand the study of Yamanaka factors and the role their application can play in healthy longevity is one of uh, the points of your interest. Could you please explain our audience in just few words what exactly are Yamanaka factors and what are the most interesting results we have by now? Well, Yamanaka was awarded the Nobel Prize for, for the, his discovery. <clears throat> he discovered that there are a, a set of four master genes that uh, when transferred to uh, normal body cells, uh, from, in his case he used just adult uh, mice, those cells in culture uh, were rejuvenated and really uh, what to, we technically uh, uh, call reprogrammed. So they were converted, turned into embryonic stem cells from being adult cells. So they were rejuvenated and also uh, their identity was changed from a skin cell to a embryonic stem cell. So that really revolutionized uh, the world of biology and later people discovered that by reprogramming cells, this is the technical name for it, and then making them back to um, become uh, the same cells, uh, the same type of cells they were, this can be done, those cells that were back to be, say, skin cells were rejuvenated. For example, other people using this methodology, the Yamanaka methodology, took cells, collected cells from centenarians, healthy centenarians, and those skin cells are old because the, the owner is old, so um, they have a show a lot of alterations and so they reprogram uh, those cells to uh, embryonic stem cells using the Yamanaka method and factors and then they uh, um, converted those cells back to what they were um, skin cells and found that kind of magically those cells were rejuvenated. I mean they look like being 
uh, collected from a person, uh, a 20-year-old person. So that was really a wonderful achievement. And more recently, very recently, December last year, someone in, uh, in the United States discovered that the same can be done, at least in principle, in animals. So because so far has had been done in cells, which is okay, but it's not doesn't help us. And now someone has achieved that rejuvenation in animals. Uh, so this is a first um, study, but a very promising one. Uh, we say this is a seminal study because it opens a new horizon for um, aging, because it's better to speak of rejuvenation than speaking of aging. So now gerontologists, maybe in the future, will begin to speak not about aging, but about rejuvenating people. So I, as an example, I give mine. If you take from me, I am a 65, uh, 20 years of age, I will feel much better, although I don't have any serious disease. Definitely have many elements of old age that I will feel much better and everybody probably of my age. So this is the, the ultimate cure, perhaps, for aging. That uh, sounds really fascinating. Mm, so, well, the community is supporting the idea of healthy life extension is following the developments in this field quite closely. And many know about this experiment that you mentioned in mice. Um, because people would like to know about the new therapies as soon as possible, but many believe that the, pro uh, the process of translation to humans is easy and fast, while it is actually not. Could you please tell our audience what problems we are going to face when trying to translate technologies like Yamanaka factors to humans to slow down human aging? Okay, well, um, first of all, we have to confirm, this is very important because this is a first experiment, and so we have to confirm that this work, and so a wave of uh, studies, because it will r raise a lot of enthusiasm in people like me, and other people will follow up uh, Belmonte's study and will improve surely the methodology. This always happens. So um, we hope, because the main problem that we face now to translate that into uh, humans or other animals is that uh, Belmonte used um, animals that are transgenic. That is, they will they received a, a foreign genes, the Yamanaka genes actually, which are doing the work. <clears throat> and so we cannot have a transgenic human because this wouldn't be ethical. Plus, you have to to get that a uh, transgenic human. You have to to do this when the uh, the baby's um, um, embryo. So definitely, this is not going to work this way. So we will uh, have to find a method because we have the Yamanaka genes inside us, but they are silent because the cells doesn't want them to be expressed. So we will need to find a way using uh, drugs probably to uh, activate those genes that are in us. And then we activate the those genes. We don't need a transgenic animal or human. And, uh, but we need to find a way, and uh, that a lot of effort will be invested in that, surely. And uh, sooner or later, that will be the, uh, uh, the methodology will be found to use to apply uh, rejuvenation by this reprogramming technology in non-transgenic animals and eventually humans. It will take some time. How much? How long? I couldn't tell right now. But technology goes up, uh, advances very fast. For example. I never dreamed I would live to see a uh, rejuvenation achieved by science, and I did. So uh, anything is possible, and the time may be shorter than we may think. Thank you very much for sharing your vision. We wish you success in all your research activities, and we are looking forward to the publications from your team. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. much.